In this section, we show that the eilenberg mohr category for a monad T is a terminal object in the category of T-inducing adjoint situations. Recall that the forgetful functor takes an object in the eilenberg mohr category and forgets the T action, and takes a T equivariant map to its underlying e-morphism. The free functor for the eilenberg mohr construction takes an E object X to the eilenberg mohr object TX with T action given by the multiplication of the monad, and it takes the e-morphism F to the T equivariant map TF. We are now able to prove that the adjoint situation for the eilenberg mohr category is a terminal object in the category of T-inducing adjoint situations. Precisely if we're given a T-inducing adjoint situation F, which is left adjoint to U from A to E, then there is a unique morphism K, which is called the comparison functor, in the category of T-inducing adjoint situations. In other words, we have U to the T K equal to U and KF equal to F to the T. For the proof, we need to define the comparison functor K. So given an amorphism G from A to A prime, KA is defined to be UA with a T action U epsilon A, and KG is equal to UG. We can see that UG is T equivariant since the following diagram commutes by naturality of the co-unit of the adjoint situation. Next, we need to show that K is a morphism in the category of T-inducing adjoint situations. We have that U to the T K on a morphism G is equal to U G by the definition of K and the forgetful functor, U to the T. K F on a morphism F is equal to the T equivariant map, U F F, which is T F since U F is equal to T. Also note that the T actions are equal to the multiplication morphisms for the monad since the adjoint situation F left adjoint to U induces T. Therefore, KFF is equal to the free functor of the eilenberg mohr construction on F. Finally, for uniqueness of K, if K prime is another morphism in the category of T inducing adjoint situations, we must have K prime A is equal to U to the T K prime A, which is equal to U A by definition of a morphism in the category of T-inducing adjoint situations. Also, we must have K prime F is equal to U to the T K prime F, which is equal to U F, which is equal to K F. And so the only structure that is left to question is the T action of K prime A. Therefore, it is enough to show that if K prime A is equal to U A with T action theta, then theta must be equal to U epsilon A. And this is where the result of the previous section is used. We have u epsilon a equal to k epsilon a. And then from the last time, we have this is equal to epsilon to the t k a, which is equal to theta by the definition of the co-unit for the eilenberg mohr adjoint situation. Therefore, the t action is also determined. So k must be equal to k prime. And that completes the proof.